Having authored all the tool puffs which you intend to mill the material stock with, it is time to post-process the tool puffs, thus exporting them. But before we post-process the tool puffs, it is necessary to, having already verified that each of the tool puffs has valid settings defined, and making 100% sure that each of the tool puffs have different tool numbers as long as they are used with different tools. If you have authored several tool puffs using the same tool, then you should make sure that this tool has the same tool number for all the tool puffs that it is associated with. But here in this example, we have three different tool puffs, each with one individual tool. And having verified all of these things in prior steps, it is time for one final simulation of the whole setup. Previously when we simulated, we had one of the tool paths selected, thus simulating it individually. Now if we have setup selected and click the simulate button here, we can simulate the whole operation of all three tool paths. We first wait for the collision detection so as to verify that there are no detected collisions. Good. We then go back to the display tab and enable the visibility of the tool path. Make sure that we have an adequate setting for the speed and simulate. This was a little too fast for my taste, so let's reduce the speed, the playback speed, while also making sure that everything looks like we expect. This simulation of the whole setup. It is identical to the simulations of each of the three individual tool puffs, but it is a sound thing to further acquaint yourself with the operation that you are going to partake, since you are responsible for the safe execution of it. If the actual milling differs from the simulated tool puff, that is reason enough to pause the tool puff and evaluate if something has not been set up correctly, either in Fusion 360 or with the CNC machine. We'll increase the speed here. Disable the visibility of the toolpath. And following along the playback of the simulation, verifying that everything looks as expected. Now since we simulate the whole setup and not only the individual tool paths each by each, we see that it seamlessly switches between the different tool paths. Now we have entered the roughing tool path with the tool residing in tool holder 2. Now it's seamlessly changed to the toolpuff number three, the parallel toolpuff with the tool residing in tool holder number three. And here we see that this parallel toolpuff, it's so it's a, such a close shave to the original model that the original model shows, so we can hide the visibility of the model. All right, when you have simulated the whole setup so that you have visually verified that everything is as you expect, you may close and exit the simulation, show the model again optionally. With the setup selected, you go to Actions and Post Process, or alternative, clicking this button immediately. If you do not yet have a post processor in the library, as evident here, you can click these three dots to navigate to one you have locally stored. But let's first download that. Go to the KTH CNC Google Drive in Fusion 360. There's a subfolder called Post Processor. And here we have a post processor that Jose, a doctorate student, 
has customized for use with the CNC router at KTH Architecture School. Right click, download, move it to an appropriate folder. In Fusion 360, click the three dots. In the local post processor library, click the import button. Navigate to the directory where you store the post processor and open it. With it open, simply click select. Now, when you post process the toolpath, the G code will be in a .nc file format and it will be named as designated here and output to this directory here. So perhaps first, if this is not set to a suitable directory, click these three dots to, to navigate to, to such a suitable directory. Here perhaps in the CNC G code subdirectory, select folder. And the name should be concise, so as to be possible to view distinctively in the very constrained CNC controller display. The display of the CNC controller can only show the first 17 or 20 so characters of the file name. So it is important that you select the file name which has the most distinctive information in the beginning of it. So that you do not export several toolpaths each with a common very long file name prefix such as my fantastic project underscore toolpath1, uh, then each one of these toolpaths would look like they are the same in the display. Due to this constraint, it is good to have early on in the file name a unique identifier for the individual toolpaths, and then they can share common suffixes before the file suffix. Like for this example, we can take today's date, 210914. That's only six characters, and with an underscore, that's only seven. And here we can have tool one, two, three, underscore Eric W, who is the author of the model, and whom which the model is courtesy of. And that is all you need to do. For this first one, you may as well check the tab operations here and see that since we ha had selected the setup here before clicking on the post processor tool, we have all the three toolpaths active. And for this first toolpath that we're going to post process and export, that is the intention, we are going to export toolpaths both one for all three toolpaths as well as three individual ones. The reason for this is that if the time it takes to actually mill all three of these is within the opening hours of the workshop, then it is entirely possible to use this single toolpath or this single toolpath file to execute all three toolpaths automatically, consecutively with confirmation from you with the CNC controller. But however, if you have to pause or abort the toolpath for any reason due to time constraints, due to power breakage, due to your significant other giving birth spontaneously, thus requiring you to pause or cancel the toolpath, then you should have separate toolpaths as well so that during the time of cancellation, if the whole first toolpath, the clearance toolpath, was completely finished, and the roughing toolpath had just begun, then you can, the next possible day, you can continue with the second toolpath and run the second and the third separately, individually. The result will be the same if in this example the roughing toolpath had executed for some time. You will of course in the beginning of the, with the second try of the roughing toolpath, you will initially cut air, but when you reach the point in the toolpath of a cancellation, it will resume to engage in the material. And with regards to the time constraints, due to the simulated time not being an accurate estimation of the actual time, this is also good to safeguard if you would need to divide the program into two days, then you don't have to return to Fusion 360 having realized that, but you have already exported the separate toolpaths as well. That is the reasoning behind this. So first, we export a toolpath file with all of the three toolpaths included. This one namely, as seen in the operations here. And 
having set an identifiable name in a suitable output folder and having made sure that the unit is a document unit and we have previously in previous steps made sure that the units are in millimeter while setting up the stock, we can simply click post. When the toolpath is successfully posted, it will come up this pop-up here and you see where it has been saved and that it has been successfully posted. Should you for any reason need to post process this same set of toolpaths again, you can simply have this NC program entry selected and click post process again. In this case, it will ask you if you want to overwrite this file. Since it's the same, it doesn't matter. But if you would have uh, dislocated the original exported one, this is a nifty way to just export the same file again. All right, but we are not ready since we want to export the individual toolpaths as well. We select the setup again, click post process. And now, having previously loaded the correct post processor, everything is according as we want. So we can just go to operations and then make sure that we only have the first toolpath active. And that we can verify here that it is tool number one that is used. We go to settings. We name this adequately. So in this case, 210914 underscore only tool one underscore Eric W. All right, post and click the setup again. Go to post process, operations, only number two, settings, name number, 2109, 14 underscore tool two underscore Eric W. Click post. Very good. Click setup again, and for the last time, post process, go to operations, and have only the third toolpath active here. Change the name, 210914 underscore tool3 underscore Eric W. And here you see that, that we have the common signifier, what is common to all of them, except the date, which is there for sorting reasons is used as a suffix rather than taking up place in the beginning or middle of the toolpath file name. All right, click post. And having exported all four of these, we can visually see that, that we have four different NC programs that we have post processed and exported. One, two, oh, yeah. These are indexed depending on the number of times you open the post process tool. And the first first time we did, we did not actually commit a toolpath, which is why we have two, three, four, and five, but we have four of them. That is the point. If you navigate to the directory where you exported the files, you can here see these four .nc gcode files. Before uploading these to your KTH server account, it is advisable to open at least the one with all of the toolpaths included, but optionally all four of them, in a text editor, Here with notepad open, we can see the name of the file. These double slashes mean that these lines are commented out. They will not be read by the CNC machine, but they are here for your enlightenment. The name of the G code file and what tool numbers are used and the properties of the given tools. Here we have the diameter and the circular radius, and the circular radius is only for the ball end mills, while the flat end mill has no circular radius. And these values are very important to verify. Here we have the Z minimum amount, and this is in relation to the soft origin or the soft home that you set with the machine prior to milling, and this corresponds with the top surface of the material. This means that this toolpath will with this tool go at the deepest 46.425 millimeters down into the material from the top surface. This is something that we should enter into the Google document file community feeds and speeds as the total depth of cut. So we can copy this value, enter it here, copy this value, copy this value, enter it here. And we can control C, copy the formatting and apply those to these three cells, control Alt V, 
And now we see here that this clearance toolpath is the toolpath that extends deepest into the material stock. And we see that even though we have stated to leave three millimeters of bottom margin, this actually means that we only have about 2.6 millimeters as the thinnest part of the bottom margin. But take in mind that this is with a ball end mill, a ball end mill with a circular radius of eight millimeters which means that the scallops left will yield a bottom margin that is in most parts more than three millimeters. And 2.6 millimeter is still within what is reasonable to leave as a bottom margin. With these entered, we can go back to the notepad here and optionally we can check or the other three, but they should be identical to each one of these individually. This is just to verify that these said minimum values are not uh, far too off. If it would have stated uh, 120 millimeters, then we know that that is more than the actual height of the stock that we have and something has gone severely wrong. But having made sure that these look as expected, we can close down these and upload these to your KTH server account. I'll preemptively select all four of these. Go to home.ug.kth.se log in with your credentials and drag these into the KTH server interface. Make sure of course that you are in your home drive. Click upload to start the upload. And now the files can be easily accessed from the computer in the CNC room by logging into your personal account. You can also upload your toolpath files in the KTH CNC Google Drive, in the Fusion 360 subdirectory, in the toolpath subdirectory of that. You can drag in the files as well. Any of the two methods are valid and both can be used. Just bear in mind that KTACNC is not responsible for the loss of your toolpath files should they disappear and that you store your original toolpath files in a secure directory. This concludes the ninth part of this tutorial series. How to post, process and export your toolpaths in Fusion 360.